I'm Charles Strong III of Strong Counseling Solutions, LLC. We offer on-site counseling in Gretna, Louisiana, and board-approved online counseling throughout the state of Louisiana. For PLPCs seeking to become licensed, we offer supervision. And for mental health rehabs, we offer services of assessment, psychotherapy, and consulting. Liliana Mason, PhD, author of Uncivil Agreement, How Politics Became Our Identity, has spoken at length about social group identity. Dr. Mason said, we all have a hundred identities. The one that's the most salient at any given moment is the one that feels threatened. This statement speaks, of course, to how politics are such a large part of who we feel we are. Dr. Mason notes how this part of ourselves can cause conflict, stating, if there are groups of traditionally high status people who are seeing other people's status rising relative to theirs, they feel like that's a threat. So they'll respond to that by holding on to that threatened identity much more strongly and gathering together with other people who are in the same social group to try to defend it. As a practice of understanding this concept, Dr. Mason painted the imagery of standing in an open field when you hear a lion's roar. If you don't know where the roar came from, you may hide, but if you're right in front of the lion and hear the roar and you're surrounded by a group of hunters, you may instead feel readiness to fight. Dr. Mason says that if you feel a weaker identity or isolated or alone, you won't respond with such adrenaline. You'll be more prone to hide, be quiet, and listen. So why do politics find their way into our daily conversations and even our identities? Humans need to categorize things to avoid confusing chaos. All the cues we experience are used to form our understanding of the world and help us navigate to where we want and need to be. There's also the need for inclusion and exclusion. We tell ourselves that we are X and not Y as a means of identity development that places us in certain clusters. Dr. Mason claimed that we act like we disagree more than we actually do, and that's due in part to our identities. She stated that uh, right after the Sandy Hook shootings, about 90% of Americans supported legislation for background checks for gun purchases, including 80% Republicans. But when asked if you would support Congress passing a bill for it, only about 50% of Republicans supported the bill. The idea of one's political party losing is said to account for that change. Dr. Mason explored why these political parties have become so prioritized in our identity. To understand this, she points to changes that have happened over the past few decades. There's the Civil Rights Act of 1964, after which many Southern Democrats began to leave the party, and in the 1970s and 1980s, this next generation would go on to identify as Republicans. Dr. Mason noted the religious right really became involved in politics in the 1980s. By year 2000, essentially all the requests focused on the contracts with the American family, the Christian coalition platform. By now, voters had been exposed to racial and religious cues, which would heavily guide where their party interests resided. But over time, voters have looked to elect parties and not important policies, a mentality that undermines seeking out one's best interests. Dr. Mason stated Trump campaigned on two effective things, using the term winning as much as possible, and speaking out that we are losers, losing all the time, and he will make us win again. He also pointed out a scapegoat as to why we feel we are losers. So if you don't know where the line is, you have nothing to fight. You feel anxious, you hide. But if you know where the line is, and you're told you're a winner, and you're surrounded by people who are strong, you get angrier and get up and start fighting. Spend a little time on social media, and you'll quickly discover the vitriol between liberals and conservatives. And this conflict is often based on the names of the parties alone not associated with policies pushed by the parties. Dr. Mason states, we make decisions more like sports fans, to win, not to reach anything productive, and not holding the team accountable afterwards. A common hazard of social interactions these days, particularly with friends and family, is political discourse. Thankfully, Dr. Mason gives advice on how to navigate what could be a conversational landmine. She says, try to change the subject away from politics. Remember your friends or family, then come back and talk sincerely. If you're talking to someone with a completely different concept of reality, it's almost not a conversation worth having, unless you can come back to that sincere conversation. And finally, build trust and rapport with someone first, or each side would just dig in with their parties instead of speaking on a humanistic level. That's our talk for today. Hope you learned something or found something interesting. You can find more videos like these on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. We'll be back next week with a new video. So until then, thanks and be well.